Marcus and Stephen were inseparable from the time they were kids. Growing up in a rough neighborhood, their friendship was their lifeline. They went through everything together, hanging out after school, facing bullies, and dreaming about a better life. They saw their parents struggle, and the constant lack of money shaped them. They shared meals when food was scarce and gave each other pep talks when life felt too hard. Through these experiences, they developed an unbreakable bond that went beyond friendship, they were more like brothers. Their shared goal of escaping poverty was a beacon of hope for them. They promised each other that, one day, they would be successful and live a life of luxury. Even when the girls they liked rejected them because they couldn't afford fancy dates or nice clothes, they kept pushing forward, determined to prove that wealth wasn't the only thing that made a person valuable. The journey out of poverty was long and tough for both Marcus and Stephen. They didn't have the luxury of higher education or wealthy families to back them. Instead, they took on any job they could find, delivering packages, working in retail, and even taking shifts as janitors when no other options were available. But what they lacked in resources, they made up for in ambition. Marcus had a knack for business, and Stephen had a natural talent for recognizing real estate opportunities. They often stayed up late, discussing new ideas and plans for their future while saving every penny they earned. Their sacrifices paid off. Marcus started a tech company that took off, while Stephen became a successful real estate investor, flipping properties for big profits. The day they moved into their luxurious apartment overlooking the city, they realized they had made it. But even with all the wealth and success, something was missing. Despite all the success they had achieved, Marcus and Stephen remained single. After all the rejection they had faced when they had nothing, they became wary of relationships. They didn't want women who were only interested in them for their money. Both men had experienced the sting of being overlooked in favor of guys who had more financial stability. Now, with wealth and status, they didn't trust easily. They made a pact to find women who loved them for who they were, not for what they had. Marcus and Stephen also enjoyed their bachelor lifestyle, throwing parties in their big apartment, traveling, and focusing on their careers. However, deep down, they longed for a meaningful connection, someone to share their lives with. But they were careful, always second-guessing women's motives and wondering if they were after love or the lifestyle that came with dating a rich man. One evening, Marcus was driving home from a late business meeting, his mind preoccupied with thoughts of work. As he approached a busy intersection, a woman suddenly walked into the road, seemingly unaware of the traffic. Marcus slammed on his brakes, but it was too late, the car knocked her down. His heart pounded in his chest as he rushed out of the car to check on her. The woman lay on the ground, unconscious but breathing. He immediately called for an ambulance, staying with her until help arrived. At the hospital, Marcus waited anxiously, not knowing the extent of her injuries. He felt a wave of guilt and responsibility. When the doctors assured him she would recover, he was relieved but still deeply shaken. Marcus stayed by her side until she woke up, wanting to make sure she knew he hadn't meant to harm her. This accident would change both their lives. When Sarah finally regained consciousness, Marcus introduced himself, apologizing profusely for the accident. But instead of being angry, Sarah was kind. She explained that she had been so lost in thought that she didn't even realize she had stepped into traffic. Tears filled her eyes as she shared her story. Her mother had just passed away, leaving her completely alone in the world. She had no family, no job, and no place to go. Grief had consumed her, and she didn't know how to move forward. As she spoke, Marcus felt a deep sense of empathy. Her pain reminded him of the struggles he and Stephen had faced, and he couldn't help but feel a need to help her. Sarah's vulnerability touched him in a way he hadn't expected. 
She wasn't looking for pity, she just needed someone to listen, and Marcus was more than willing to be that person. Over the next few days, Marcus continued to visit Sarah at the hospital, making sure she was recovering well. The more they talked, the more Marcus realized how alone Sarah truly was. She had no home, no job, and nowhere to turn. Moved by her situation, he came up with a solution. He offered her a place to stay in his home until she could get back on her feet. It wasn't charity, he assured her. She could help out with household chores, and in exchange, he would pay her. Sarah was overwhelmed by his kindness. She had expected nothing from him but was met with generosity and understanding. She accepted the offer with gratitude, and Marcus made sure she knew she was welcome for as long as she needed. Moving into Marcus's home gave Sarah a sense of stability she hadn't felt in a long time, and she was determined to repay his kindness. When Stephen first met Sarah, he was immediately taken by her. She was quiet, polite, and carried a sadness that made him want to comfort her. Stephen greeted her warmly, shaking her hand and offering her a genuine smile. Welcome to our home, Sarah, he said, his voice soft and reassuring. He wanted her to feel at ease, knowing that she had been through a lot. Over the next few days, both Marcus and Stephen went out of their way to make Sarah comfortable. They bought her small gifts, a new dress from Marcus, a novel from Stephen, hoping to lift her spirits. Marcus was kind to her, always checking in to see how she was doing, while Stephen took every opportunity to make her laugh. Their generosity touched Sarah deeply, and she felt like she had finally found a safe place. But what she didn't realize was that both men were slowly falling for her. As the days passed, Marcus began to notice Stephen's growing interest in Sarah. At first, it was subtle, Stephen spending a little extra time talking to her or making her laugh with his jokes. But soon, it became more obvious. Stephen started buying her gifts that felt more personal, jewelry, perfume, and even clothes that flattered her figure. Marcus found himself growing increasingly uncomfortable with the situation. He had developed feelings for Sarah, but he hadn't yet expressed them. He assumed Stephen knew how he felt, but as Stephen's attention toward Sarah intensified, Marcus realized that wasn't the case. Every time he saw Stephen with her, jealousy flared up inside him. He didn't want to admit it, but he was afraid that Stephen was trying to win Sarah over. The tension in the house grew as Marcus struggled with his emotions, unsure of how to handle the situation without ruining their friendship. One evening, Marcus could no longer hold back his frustration. After seeing Stephen hand Sarah yet another gift, he stormed into the living room, his heart racing with anger. Stephen, we need to talk, Marcus said, his voice tense. Stephen looked up from the book he was reading, surprised by Marcus's tone. What's going on? He asked, frowning. Why are you getting so close to Sarah? Marcus demanded, unable to hide his jealousy. You're always giving her gifts, spending time with her, what are you trying to do? Stephen was taken aback. I'm just being nice, Marcus. I didn't realize it was a problem, he replied defensively. You should have known, Marcus snapped. I've had feelings for her since the day she moved in, and you're acting like you're trying to take her away from me. The argument escalated quickly, with both men shouting over each other, their friendship hanging by a thread. Stephen had always respected Marcus, but this confrontation caught him off guard. He hadn't realized that Marcus was so deeply interested in Sarah. Sure, he had feelings for her too, but he didn't think he was doing anything wrong. In his mind, he was just being friendly, trying to make Sarah feel welcome. But now, hearing Marcus's accusations, Stephen felt cornered. I didn't know you were in love with her, Marcus, he said, his voice softening. You never told me. Marcus's anger, however, didn't wane. I shouldn't have to tell you. 
You should have known. You can't just try to win her over when you know how much I care about her, Marcus insisted. Stephen, frustrated, defended himself. Sarah's not a prize to be won, Marcus. She's a person with her own feelings, and you can't expect me to stop being kind to her just because you're jealous. The argument left both men fuming. After the confrontation, the tension between Marcus and Stephen only grew worse. They stopped talking to each other unless it was absolutely necessary, and the once warm atmosphere in the apartment became cold and uncomfortable. Sarah, who had no idea about the argument, began to notice the strained relationship between the two friends. She could sense the awkwardness in the air, but neither Marcus nor Stephen said anything to her about it. Marcus withdrew, spending more time at work and less time around Sarah, hoping that distance would help him get over his feelings. Stephen, on the other hand, continued to spend time with Sarah, but he, too, felt the weight of the situation. Both men were hurting, but neither knew how to fix the damage that had been done to their friendship. And as the days went by, the rift between them deepened, threatening to destroy everything they had built together. It wasn't long before Sarah began to piece things together. The awkwardness between Marcus and Stephen became too obvious to ignore, and she started to suspect that their tension had something to do with her. One evening, as she sat in the living room, she overheard part of a heated conversation between the two friends. Words like, jealousy, and, feelings for her, caught her attention, and she realized that both Marcus and Stephen had developed romantic feelings for her. The realization hit her hard. She had never intended to come between them, and the thought of causing a rift in their friendship made her feel awful. But now that she knew the truth, Sarah had to confront her own feelings. She had grown close to both men, but she knew she could only be with one of them. It was time for her to make a decision, a decision that would change all three of their lives forever. Stephen looked at Sarah, his face softening despite the ache in his heart. He knew what she was going to say, but hearing it out loud felt different. Sarah's words were gentle, but they held a weight that made his chest tighten. I appreciate everything you've done for me. You've been so kind, she began, her voice steady. But I need to be honest with you, as she spoke, Stephen's heart sank deeper. He had hoped for something more, yet he also respected her feelings. I've had feelings for Marcus since the day he brought me here, Sarah continued, her voice filled with sincerity. He was the first person to help me when I had no one. Her words hung in the air, and Stephen realized that her connection with Marcus had always been stronger. I don't want to come between you two, she finished, her eyes pleading for understanding. Stephen sat there quietly, absorbing what Sarah had just said. His heart was heavy, but he knew that he couldn't force something that wasn't meant to be. Despite the ache in his chest, he admired her honesty. It would have been easy for her to keep stringing both of them along, but instead, she chose to be upfront, which he respected. He had always prided himself on being a man of integrity, and in this moment, he had to honor that. His feelings for Sarah were genuine, but he knew deep down that Marcus had been there first. It was Marcus who had brought her into their lives, and now, it was clear that her heart belonged to him. Later that evening, as Stephen sat alone on the balcony, gazing out at the city lights, Marcus found him. There was no need for words, both knew what had to be said. Stephen, I'm sorry, Marcus began, his voice barely above a whisper. The air between them was thick with unspoken tension, but Marcus knew he had to make things right. He glanced at Stephen, who remained quiet, his eyes fixed on the city skyline. I shouldn't have let my feelings for Sarah get in the way of our friendship. You've been my best friend for as long as I can remember, and it was wrong of me to act like you didn't matter. Marcus's voice softened further as he continued, she's already made her choice. She loves me, and I'm grateful, but it wasn't worth risking what we've built together. 
Stephen nodded, understanding the depth of Marcus's apology. He sighed, finally turning to face his friend. I get it, Marcus. I had feelings for her too, but she's made it clear that she loves you. I don't want to lose everything over this. The silence that followed felt more like a truce than an awkward pause. For the first time in days, the tension between them was beginning to lift. Marcus and Stephen had been through so much together, more than just business ventures or wild parties. They had survived the streets, battled poverty, and supported each other through life's ups and downs. This was just another challenge, one that they could overcome together. With a firm handshake, Marcus and Stephen sealed their reconciliation, and for the first time in weeks, they both smiled. The air felt lighter, and the bond between them was stronger than ever. They knew now that no woman, no matter how much she meant to either of them, could come between their brotherhood. It wasn't easy, but they had survived the test. They understood that real friendship could withstand even the toughest of challenges, and this was no exception. In the months that followed, Marcus and Sarah's relationship blossomed. With Stephen's full support, Marcus felt free to love Sarah without any lingering doubts. They grew closer with each passing day, building a life of joy and trust. When Marcus finally proposed, Sarah said yes without hesitation, her face beaming with happiness. Their wedding was a grand celebration of love and friendship, attended by their closest family and friends. Of course, Stephen was there, standing proudly beside Marcus as his best man, smiling through it all. There was no bitterness, no regret, just the satisfaction of seeing his best friend find happiness. The love between Marcus and Sarah was pure, and their life together was one filled with warmth and affection. Through it all, Stephen remained an integral part of their lives, proving that while love can be powerful, the bonds of brotherhood are unbreakable.